Welcome, welcome, welcome <clears throat> back to a Monday night pay for play set list. And we have none other than Mr. Adrian. And he has actually six songs for you guys tonight. And uh, if you look at what he said, and he actually kind of mentioned it in the chat already that he, um, <clears throat> sorry, my uh, voice is a little going crazy because I just got done running, then I ate dinner really quick. And now I have two, I actually had two more that I just ate, uh, flavor ice. So I'm gonna be eating them from time to time while I talk here. But when I eat it, the, I think the coloring of the, of the ice or whatever, the fruit coloring, food coloring, gets in the back of my throat, so it makes me weird. Yo, what up, Junk? Um, Ryan, yeah, I, I'll go back maybe after this and I'll check to see if I actually did it. I'll try to do a search for it on your YouTube stuff, um, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a question for you guys because I don't know. and You guys probably don't know either, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is um, There's this little thing here that says like how many people are watching. It says concurrent, right? And then it, like the number switches as people log off or people log on or whatever. And usually, I think the most I've ever seen it get is like 25 concurrent. And then it goes down. It's right now at seven. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think it's just me because I'm on the stream. But what's weird about that is I always just assume that that's how many people are watching right now is nine people are watching and like most of them are in the chat. Or if there's 20, there's, you know, 10 people in the chat and then people just kind of sitting there watching but not saying anything in the chat. But the thing I don't understand is after the video is over, it'll say stuff like um, uh, 54 views. Like it had 54 views and it never once said 54. So I know maybe in the course of the you know, hour, I guess, people log on, people log off and there's a total of like 54 or 55 people that logged on. But it seems like there would be more people than 11 people right now. But I don't know. So I'm trying to figure out this stuff. but. We definitely have the people who are normals who come to every, almost every uh, session that we do and uh, pretty much the same people kind of chat and the other people I think that do kind of come on, they're probably just random people in the YouTube world that, you know, there's like a live stream and they click on it and then they're like, yeah, it's not my, not my stuff. So they click off. So yeah, I, don't, I have to maybe fool around with it, Ryan, maybe that's what I'll do. What's up, John? John's in the house. But let's get back to Mr. Adrian's set. Uh, Mr. Adrian said in the chat earlier that um, this is going to be, the first couple of songs are going to be kind of like, remember I challenge you guys to pick stuff number one that you like and that you want to kind of expose people to. And then, you know, try to branch out and not just always pick progressive kind of metal or whatever songs. And according to Adrian, these first two songs that we're going to listen to are kind of like not too far out there, but they're kind of out there from what we're used to listening to. So I'm kind of interesting. Um, uh, yes, Junk, thank you for reminding me about asking that question because yes, yesterday's session has already been officially blocked. And I was like, what? I was at work and I was like, fucking block, man. It just makes no sense to me. So I went back uh, after I got off work and I looked to see what blocked it because it's usually just one song that gets the whole video blocked, which is so fucking dumb in, in any way. It's the first song. The Arcane Roots song is blocked. So that causes the whole video to be blocked. So I think what I'm going to do, maybe in a couple days or whatever, I'll dispute that in hopes that they don't check it. And if they check it, I'm going to get a copyright strike for it. But like I've told you guys before, when I dispute it um i think 24 hours after i make the dispute it goes live again until the record company or whoever blocked it responds and a lot of times these record companies just don't respond at all uh but if they do respond and they still say no it's going to be blocked then i'm going to get a copyright strike but right now i don't have any copyright strikes i did have one that erased like last month so I'm down to zero. So if I get a copyright strike, I can handle one. I'm just afraid that if I do something, I'm gonna get like, um, uh, you know, if I just all of a sudden get these two or three copyright strikes and all of a sudden my channel's gone, that's gonna suck ass. So um, <clears throat> I'll have to find a way to get a hold of you guys. <laughs> if all of a sudden my if all of a sudden my channel goes down, we gotta have like a backup plan for 
where I am. Maybe I'll announce a new channel or something on my Instagram, which by the way, up in the corner up there, you can see my Instagram. Uh, if you have Instagram and you can follow me, I'll follow you too probably. Um, and I made a Korean table yesterday, a Korean barbecue table on my own on my Sunday, so that was nice. And you can actually see that there before that actually disappears. All right, so yeah, you guys have my email. It's right there. Just write me and be like, hey, what's the new channel if my channel goes down? But I'm going to try to uh, dispute yesterday's Arcane Roots song so that hopefully it'll pop back up in the next couple of days. So this is just so dumb. And I've t said this before, but this is really the thing that is going to burn YouTube. YouTube is going to go down. I'm positive. YouTube is going down because they're just making too many stupid decisions. And the copyright bullshit that so many people, artists or creators on YouTube are bitching about is going to come back and bite them in the ass. There's going to be another platform that's going to rise up and just put YouTube in the ashes because they're fucking retarded about the copyright stuff. So, all right, so let's get on to this uh, playlist. I'm excited. I always love Adrian's playlist because he picks some good stuff, uh, stuff that I tend to like. So here we go. He says, first song, I'm going to start out with a something a little different than what we're used to hearing on your channel. The song is called Pendulum Swing by Sean James. It's a slow chill song. I love slow chill songs. He is a solo act who plays guitar bass drum with one foot and tambourine with his other foot hell yeah it's like a one-man band the guy has a beautiful voice fun side note to this song this song was playing when i proposed to my now wife dude thanks for sharing this song with us that's freaking awesome and it was was it just random or did you actually play the song on purpose when you proposed or was it just in the background or something and that's going to be a memory forever uh, didn't do it on purpose. Oh, you just said didn't do it on purpose to the song. It just happened to be at on at the moment <laughs> Continue reading before I ask the questions We were on vacation in the mountains camping next to the campfire at night So it gives a little more meaning to me. Fuck. Yeah, dude. That's a sweet memory Adrian I love see this is the kind of shit I love getting a little bit personal letting us into your life a little bit And now this is gonna probably make me like the song even more just for that fact So here we go with pendulum swing by Sean James by Sean James. Here we go. Let's get this party started. At what part in the song you proposed, if you remember? This bottle in my hand. This bottle in my hand. Stumbled around like a drunken fool. Too blind to see that I was just being used like a going way too. In those hard times, there was peace. I really like his voice for sure. But I found that a hard lesson learned is wisdom gain. Cause oh, I may fall down with the sun, you better know when nice. I'm not done. Cause I'll rise up with the moon. Gotcha, Ryan. See, I think this sounds good, man. In my. Cheap earphones. It's all a part of the pendulum swing. Pendulum swing. I like that there's no. Although you said he plays the bass drum with his foot. I haven't heard anything yet. Well, it might be a down on your luck. Oh, falling on our times, maybe giving up. I just 
just imagine Adrian at the campfire right now. Fucking awesome memory, man. Oh, there it is. Boom. You better know that we are dying. We rise up with the morning light. Two, three, go, oh, and just because we fall, it don't mean we lost it all. It's all a part of the pendulum swing. It's all a part. It's all a part of the All right, man. Damn, Adrian. <laughs> Dude, this is what I'm talking about now. Granted, this might not work with other people because they only like a certain type of genre of music. But as you all know, on my channel, I told you I love 80s music. I love melodic stuff. I love simple stuff. I love very heavy stuff. I love, I like a lot of stuff. It's funny because <clears throat> I've been, when I was in high school and I first started liking Dream Theater, people would call me a, a music snob. And I first like would take that like as a, you know, a dig, but it's like, they just didn't know, and I think that they used that as a way to just, like, you know, put me in a box or whatever. But I'm like, dude, I fucking love tons of stuff. I've never been about one genre, and a song like that, dude, absolutely rings true for me. So that will go on a playlist. Um, I love it. I think that's, like, a great campfire song, too, which I just had a campfire on Sunday night for the first time in my new house. And it's just campfires are great. I love the smell of your bot. Well, not your body, but the clothes of s smoke smell afterwards. I actually used to have a, a friend. This is really funny. Um, it was when we were religious or Christian at the time. And he had, you know, basically when you're a Christian, you have Bible covers, like these little covers that go over your Bible to keep it safe and nice and whatever, clean. And he had this thing called smoking his Bible. <laughs> not, not, not literally, but... Well, kind of literally. And what he would do is we always had campfires and he had campfires on his own when he lived in Iowa. And he would just like have his Bible sit very close to the fire without burning it, obviously, just so that the Bible itself had like that constant campfire smell to it. <laughs> and I just think that's awesome, man. Like, it's so cool. I think uh, it's a total campfire song. It's also a very driving th song. I think somebody said that they could imagine driving as well. So one for one, um, it was a little bit different than what we're used to hearing on here, but I don't think like, like you said, it wasn't really far out there. So let's get on to song number two. It says, this is another different kind of song for your channel. Another slow, chill song. Yes. Less than three minutes long. Okay. It is called Death Bright by Dax Riggs. Death, I think it's Death Bright by Dax Riggs. Dax is the former lead singer of the Doom Sludge Metal Group, Acid Bath. <laughs> what a name for a fucking band, Acid Bath. His solo material is quite a bit different than his metal days, especially if it's a slow chill song, it has to be. He has a powerful, unique, chilling voice that is soothing yet chilling. Okay, so here we go with Death Bright by Dax Riggs. Expect something kinda slower. Here we go, number two. What's up, Tim? Good to see you back. I purposely placed myself in her lips.
Okay, I'll say this. I think that da, 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 of the drums is a little too much for this feel. It's like, you don't need to do that for this song. It's just a straight do, da, do, da would be fine. Tim, I, I, I understand where you get the An Annie Lennox vibe. I like that. This is like a drug song. Total drug song. Okay, now the drum part fits better with where the song has gone. Itch your tooth. Oh, I like that. Yeah, Ryan, I can see the modest mouse thing. Like that feel. All right, so that was a very quick song. Um, I don't like it as much as the first song, but I like it. I'd like, uh, if, if every song on that album was like that, I wouldn't like the album. I'd be like, okay, that, that's a one song kind of cool vibe that I would like to come up on my random playlist if Spotify wasn't gay and had an actual random playlist. Um, so yeah, uh, I like the song. I don't like his voice as much as the first guy. I think the first guy, is definitely better and kind of more up my alley. But I think the song itself was kind of cool, kind of, you know, rocky, druggy vibe that I think is good. And short, short and sweet is what I'll call that song. And I'll put it on a playlist, but if, again, the rest of the album kind of sounded similar to that, I don't know if I would. Adrian, does the rest of the uh, like album sound similar to that? Is it like in that vibe or... Is it kind of like that song is that, and then he goes into some like death metal stuff? You said it was a newer stuff, and he took a different turn, so I'm guessing it's kind of sounding like this. All right, third song is up. Uh, he says, okay, now that I've kind of went out on the normal box, I'll get back to some more typical music I normally choose. Okay, here we go. Adrian, honestly, th those were great, great like choices for like a little bit different than what we normally get on the channel, but still really good. So good job on that. The third song is Rosemary by the Deftones. I'll be honest, it was really interesting because I like the Deftones song that we've heard so far. And in the comments, a lot of people were just kind of like, I'm not into Deftones, I'm not into... So I wonder if I get more into Deftones that I won't like them. But so far, I'm liking a couple of... I just like the vibe of them. So we'll see if Rosemary's in the same vein. It says it's another awesome track by them. Lots of atmosphere, droning, and chilling vibes to this song. If it's like that, I'm going to like it. So it's, I mean, it makes me wonder, obviously, they probably have a bunch of other stuff, but there was a lot of comments of people kind of downing on the Deftones. But if it's atmospheric, droning and chilling, I'm probably going to like it. So <laughs> let's see if we Rosemary is good. All right, here we go. Definitely atmospheric. Scott, I actually like that. I like that you either like it or hate it. No lukewarm, it's very biblical. Don't be lukewarm. Ooh, I like that. Do, do, do. Ooh, I like that. Dude, 
Dude, I fucking love this. Sounds like Devin. It's a very Devin vibe right now. Yeah. Yes. Ryan, in '97, I was my first year of college. My birthday is on the 23rd. <laughs> Dude, you guys are all a decade younger than me. You guys are all my half brother's age. Adrian, I'm feeling this song a lot. I like that. That guitar riff is very, very Devin. <laughs> yeah, Tim is a decade above me, so. Or maybe two. It's because you live in that sorry ass state. <laughs> Tim, good comeback. Well, Ryan, Cleveland sucks, so don't blame him. But Detroit is worse. <laughs> By far. Dude, I like this song a lot. That atmospheric that you said, Adrian, is exactly right. Yes. See now this heaviness, I feel like it fits. Yes, dude. How can people not like these guys? Unless their other songs totally sound different than this and suck. This is fucking sick. Come to the end. No. Adrian, this is fucking awesome. How are people like, yeah, they're okay. Such good writing here. Makes sense, John. I can see that. 
And maybe I would be too the more I listen to them. But so far, what's been picked has been gold for me. It's definitely got that like... resolved on a nice note even though it's a little droney still <laughs> all right so uh yeah i pretty much said everything i felt in the song fucking going immediately on a playlist that song was awesome had a good mixture of atmospheric tones with some heavy riffage that th i felt like the heavy riffage fit perfectly with what was going on in the song transition nice yeah i think it's great um so adrian you're three for three so far with me, which is the way you fucking always are. You always pick good songs, man. Your sets are top. <laughs> you, John, uh, Jean, a bunch of people are starting to move up in that top spot for a challenge, though. So um, I, I see we're in a little debate about cities. Uh, another city to throw in the mix that has lost its identity is Denver, especially in the last like five to six years since all of the retards, the retards, I'm going to put it on a different stress. The retards from San Francisco and California moved out there. Now they're freaking killing Denver. So Denver's turning into a shit pile of nothing. So there's a lot of tourists there as well. Uh, I haven't spent a ton of time in Knoxville uh, or Nashville. So I drove through there a couple months ago, but that was about it. All right, let's get on to the next song. Adrian's on a roll, as always. So um, he says the fourth song is called Abandoned by the band Unprocessed. We've listened to Unprocessed one other time, I think. They are a German tech metal gent band. The singer is the lead guitarist, and I read he was famous Instagram guitarist before making this band. Ooh. They kind of sound like a mix of Tesseract. Oh, I think that uh, Mr. Paravarium will be happy about that. Sound like a mix of Tesseract and the Contortionist to me, which we've heard the Contortionist on here, although I can't exactly remember their sound because I don't think we've heard a ton of them, just a couple of songs. I'm giving you the official video because that's all I could find on YouTube, so you might have to black it out. And you know what? Since all these fucking videos are getting blocked out, I'm just going to black it out, but at least we can still listen to it. So this is called Abandoned by the band Unprocessed. So let's see how this goes. Uh, song number four. Here we go. Let me put the filter on. Let's see if that works. Ooh, it sounds like Polyphia. Yeah, I do remember them because I think the last time I said they sound like Polyphia. I like the I like this rhythm so far. Yes. Got a funky soul to it. You know I like that. Oh. I like all the little like tidbits going on in, in the sides that my cheap earphones can pick up. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. 
There's definitely a lot of things to catch on here. Here's the gent. Ooh, I like that stop. I'm liking this. I'm definitely liking it. Adrian, he is. Do you think he's as good as Henson or whatever that kid's name is for Polyphia? I would say it could have a better hook. Because the rhythm and like the main riff is hooky. But it'd be nice if this went into an atmospheric chorus, which it didn't. Watch the damn video. I love this kind of stuff. You want to watch. Yep, I think we all agree with Ryan. Ryan has stated the obvious for us all about this song. I like it, but it's getting kind of redundant without a good chorus to like hook you in and then go back to that other stuff. All right, so the interesting thing I do wanna point out about this band though, um, is that, okay, good, Junk, I'm glad you just said that because I my first thought was, oh, it sounds like Polyphia, but I would actually say I prefer this over Polyphia because I feel like Polyphia does too much rhythmic stuff to where every song pretty much sounds the same. And I've heard several people say in their reactions to Polyphia that, you know, once you've heard one song, you kind of heard them all, which is kind of what I've said. Now they've done a pretty good job in some songs, like switching it up enough that it doesn't sound like the same exact song, but it's still in the same vein of everything's like very rhythmically and mathematical and stuff like that. This, however, I feel like had the, and so what it made me think is this, because as you described it, Adrian, it had a genty part that was like different, right? And so like, I feel like um, the genty part, like the rhythmic part kind of allowed it to breathe a little bit more than like a typical Polyphia song. Like if it would have just been that, the whole time, like Polyphia does, it gets kind of too redundant, but they did a good job at doing like that rhythmically tight kind of, you know, section, but then going into a gent kind of like, that made it sound 
uh, different and it kind of you know made it breathe a little bit which i would say i prefer more than just the polyphia songs and adrian the only reason i'm saying polyphia is because polyphia is my first introduction to this kind of style because it's you know and then i heard um uh who was it that that solo guitarist that i said sounded like polyphia and they got mad i think it was ryan got mad someone got mad dan maybe dan it was like a it was awesome guitar, like solo guitars, and it showed him like playing, but it was very like Polyphia. And like the only reason I compared it to Polyphia, yeah, I don't, was it Pliny? No, it was somebody else. Pliny, I think, has more jazz roots than like more jazzy sound and progressive sound than he does like Polyphia sound. Um, yeah, maybe it was Dan. I think Dan got a little upset. Uh, I can't think. It was like started with an S, staccato, staccato, or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But the only reason I compare it to Polyphia is because Polyphia is the first that I've heard. So maybe these guys started that kind of before Polyphia, but I don't know that because Polyphia was the first that I heard that did this. So that's the way comparison works. It's, you're going to compare it to whoever you heard first do that kind of sound or whatever. So I prefer this uh, than. Um, the Polyphia stuff as far as, cause I felt like it added an additional kind of section to it. But yes, I do feel like it uh, was missing a good chorus. If they had done what they did and then like had a chorus that was like a Caligula's horse kind of chorus that was atmospheric and beautiful, that would have been badass. That was, that, I think that would have put that song over the top for me, but it was missing that quite a bit. So, all right, uh, let's get into the next song. Uh, the fourth fifth song is oh this is called greed by votum votum the first votum song i heard i fucking loved so i'm i'm very interested to hear these guys again another powerful song by them again not the most technical but something about the mood they build by the voice and atmosphere just touches the soul which i would agree with and it doesn't have to be technical we've said this over and over again on this channel technical is good but technical can be good or it can be a detriment just depends on how it's used Non-technical music can also be good depending on how it's used or not used. So here we go with Greed by Votum. Dude, I'm pumped to hear this. Here we go. Uh, is this, yeah, this one. Good. That's the band that, or the guy that I'm talking about, Sincato. Glad I remember it started with an S. <laughs> Pat on my back. Ooh, I like that. Notice no vibrato, just a clear note on that harmony. <laughs> Fucking no vibrato. Get rid of the vibrato as much as you can. Like that transition. That was like a more comfortable transition than some bands do when they go heavy. Ryan, I can hear the bola a little bit.
fucking 10 out of 10 transition back to this part. 10 out of 10. Pure notes. Fuck the vibrato. That's the statement of this damn set list. Fuck the vibrato. Can we all say it together? Fuck the vibrato. I don't really know what to say because I don't really I've heard two Gorgia songs Gorgira Gorgira the first one I liked the other one or I didn't <laughs> yeah I like that too John still stuck on witness what do you mean Totally agree, Adrian, with the... With the atmospheric feel, just... And it touches something, for sure. Oh, nice. I'll talk about that in a second when this is over. Okay, I guess it's the end of that one. Definitely emotions, 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 Adrian. Damn. Probably Max is, uh, he said he was going to fall asleep, and he's probably asleep because that song was, like, just stellar. Just kind of puts you in a trance. Uh, definitely like that song. That's the second, I think that's the second Votum song. Have I heard three? I think it's two. I think that's the second Votum song I've heard. And... Yeah, definitely like these guys. Definitely want to hear more. Um, as far as Vola, have I heard the whole new Vola album? Because what I've been surprised by is I've liked every song by them pretty much. I think there's only one or two Vola songs that I was just like, eh, it's okay. Almost every Vola song I've heard has been amazing. And um, I... I, I reacted to several songs off the new album, but I can't remember if I've heard the whole thing. And if I haven't heard the whole thing, and their old albums and their new albums pretty much don't have any bad songs, I was wondering why no, why people just stopped requesting them. Uh, 
I've heard six of nine. Okay, so damn, where's the other three? Are the other three just not that good? What, huh? <laughs> the, the rap part, is that Black Claws, I think? The rap section I didn't like when I first heard it, and that's a perfect example of me not liking something when I first heard it, but the more I listen to it, it's fucking good. I think it's great. The guy sounds like um, uh, Yin Yang Twins. <laughs> he sounds like the Yin Yang Twins, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna oh, turn you around, put it on you, like you like it. <laughs> All right, well, if they're amazing, I wonder why people stopped requesting are suggesting me listen to the other three Vola songs off the new album. I'm dying to hear them and I'm like holding off because I want to hear them on here for the first time because the first reaction is always the best. So, all right, let's get to the last song of this playlist. Um, he says, last but not least is Constance by Spirit Box. We've heard Spirit Box before. This is a very emotional song. I wish we could do the official video because it goes so well with the song and it's very emotional. The song is about the lead singer's grandmother passing away and the video director's grandmother battling dementia, i.e. my father. This might hit right at home. I know this will be a long read, but I think it's worth it for the context of the song. Here's an article clip of the singer explaining the meaning of the song. So everyone stop. Everyone listen to the singer explaining because now you get some context and I get some context in which to hear the song and understand it more completely, which is always good. So he says this, I came to our director Dylan with a proposition. Let's create the music video and the lyric content of the song at the same time. We both felt compelled for the song and story to reflect the sorrow we both feel about our grandmother's passing away recently. Due to border shutdowns, I was not able to say goodbye to my grandmother Phyllis, to whom the song is in tribute, or attend her funeral, lamented the front woman. I always promised her that I would sing at her memorial service because she always requested a pretty song with none of that scary screaming. <laughs> I hoped writing the song with no scary screaming in it would help me find a sense of closure. Very interesting. I don't know how to say it. Uh, further elaborated, Dylan wrote his video concept to honor his grandmother, Constance, to whom the video is the tribute. So the song is a tribute to Phyllis the video is a tribute to Dylan's grandmother, Constance. Um, our music video usually have, videos usually have a horror element to them and we wanted to explore a different side of horror. The horror of feeling like your mind is betraying you due to a long battle with dementia. With Dylan's permission, we named the song Constance to immortalize her story of dementia. All right, so here we go. That's a great context. I'm very interested to hear this song now based off that background. Holy shit, here we go. transition there. Oh, 
I like the way they're reading the lyrics. Ooh, great line there. Yes. I don't understand the heretics wouldn't face me. They're repeating this. I have been waiting my whole life for pressure and Is this not the video? Or is this just a lyric video? I love this. I love that like... Okay, I got it. This is definitely going on a playlist. There's Jen. Yeah, definitely a great song. Um, I didn't get like emotional or anything about it, but as far as listening to it, yes, definitely a great song. Now, this, after this is done, I'm probably gonna go watch the actual video of it because <laughs> uh, people are saying that it's so good. I, I was assuming that that was the video, uh, but I guess if it's gonna get blocked, then thank you for not having me do that because it seems like we're in the stream of consciousness of getting everything freaking blocked um so yeah uh para do you think it's as good as the uh bent knee song because that bent knee song fucking tore me apart <laughs> that bent knee song i mean specific because it was so personal to me and what i'm going through with my dad that fucking bent knee song crushed me um so yeah <laughs> i wonder if it's as good as that um that song certainly, like the way it was constructed and everything, was very well done. And I could see myself getting emotional, but I guess we'll have to go watch it and find out. So I'll go look it up after this is done and let you guys all know. Oh, people say it's better. Interesting. All right, so that's a definite must. But uh, yeah, so in my opinion, I would say for me, uh, and again, this is not about me and just what I like, but for me, because I am one of the many opinions that listen to this set list, this would be a five out of six set list song for me, or maybe like a four and a half, because I'd say the second song was kind of a half. It was good, but it wasn't great or wasn't a full one. Um, so I would say this is another great set list by fucking Adrian. You always pick the good stuff. You always got a good taste that matches a lot of mine. Uh, but maybe other people felt something different. Uh, you could give some feedback if you want to. Obviously, be nice, you know, just differences of opinions. Uh, and sometimes we connect, and that's what it's all about. So uh, we come to an end to this set list. Uh, we're right exactly at an hour, and um, that means we have the rest of the week. I will say this, as far as next weekend, I have received three playlists. Uh, so we've got three videos Maybe. And the reason I say maybe is because only one of them have paid. <laughs> so 
So people sent me set lists and say, oh, I'll pay later. And that's cool, but they haven't paid yet. So unless they pay, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, so that still leaves a fourth video open for next weekend. Um, so if you guys have set lists, you're ready to, to get in there. Otherwise, we'll just do what we've always done. And either I'll do a set list or maybe I'll take a break for a day since I can't remember the last time I've had an actual break from these other than technical difficulties, which wasn't my fault. So um, yeah, we will probably see you on Thursday night. I know for sure uh, Jean-Francois has paid for Saturday. So he is ready to go on Saturday. So that gives us basically Thursday, uh, Sunday, and Monday left. So hopefully see you guys next Thursday. If not, we'll see you on Saturday for sure. So great set list, Adrian. Good job. Loved all the set lists this past weekend. It's been good. Have a great work week, work week and uh, hopefully it goes fast so we can get back here on the weekend. All right. So peace out, boys, and maybe a girl if you're out there somewhere. We love you.